Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. We are God's Church of Love online on our Tuesday Bible Study Week. Now, this is our weekly service as well, as Saturday. Now, what I want you to hear is Psalms 13. That's what we're reading from. How long wilt thou forget me, O Lord, forever? How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall mine enemy be exalted over me? Consider and hear me, O Lord, my God. Lighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest mine enemy say, I have prevailed against him. And those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. But I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord because he hath dealt bountifully with me. Okay. Now, this is uh, this Pat's two cents now coming up. Listen, you guys. God knows when we're going through stuff that we can't handle. God knows when we're in a quandary and we don't understand what is up with this stuff. God understands when our hearts are hurting, when we feel despondent, when we feel all alone. God understands that. But like Job, Job, God allowed Job to suffer for seven years. And many of us would have walked away from him and done just what his wife said. Curse God and die. Just go on and curse God and die. Some of us would have done that. Being weak in the faith, being discouraged for seven years, feeling abandoned, not hearing an answer from God for seven years. Job cried out to him that whole seven years, but he never lost faith. He got angry with God, but he never lost his faith. Mm. He, he went through pity parties, but he never walked away from God. He knew no matter how bad God, things got, God had the last word in his life. And he knew to stay on his good side no matter what. Even if he felt like he was being dealt a bitter, a bitter pill and didn't know why. The bottom line is he definitely, he definitely kept his faith in God. So what I want you to think about is this. What happened at the end of his journey, the end of his suffering? God spoke to him and they had a dialogue. And Job came away with revelation and complete healing, y'all. And when God got through dealing with Job, Job's life was seven times better. Everything, as Joel chapter 2 says, all the years that the locusts have eaten, all of Job's years of losing his children, his family dying, his cattle died, everything being a loss. All he had left was a bitter wife and a sick body. That's all he had left. And God blessed him and restored to him seven times what he lost. What Satan had taken away, God restored to him seven times. Why? Because he remained faithful to his commitment to God, even though he couldn't understand why God would allow it or do it, he didn't know what was going on. When his family died, he said, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. He didn't curse God, he said, blessed be the name of the Lord. And because of his attitude, in spite of the self-pity and the angry moments, his attitude toward God remained honorable. And God rewarded him greatly because of it. Now, my question to you, 
Will you be faithful to God when it seems like he's forsaken you? Or will you trust that the seeming forsakenness is a moment of silence as part of your testing period to see how greatly he will reward you when he pulls you out? Sometimes the way you go through a test, whoo, this is hard. It's even hard for me to preach. Sometimes the way you go through a test shows how greatly you'll be rewarded when God pulls you out of that test. But you don't know if you're going to come out on this side in the land of the living or if you're going to come out of that test on the other side in eternity. Either way, you will be greatly rewarded. This word is challenging me right now because I know there are certain things I told God that if they happen, I'm going to make certain decisions. And I am telling you, there are certain things I don't think I can handle. I don't think I can handle. Not that God's grace is not sufficient. I don't want to handle. I don't want to deal with. I know my limits. And those things go beyond my limits. And even talking to you, this is challenging me. So excuse my emotion right now, but my flesh is ramming up against this because I think of the possibilities of my future. And you need to think the same. And I want to be rewarded greatly. And I have to see how far will I trust God. And I hope and pray he has enough mercy on me not to take me through some of that stuff that I'm not looking forward to. I don't discuss it because I don't want to give the enemy any ideas. So I say to you, that's why we must keep our head in that word. Every time I would get despondent or depressed, I would get scriptures like this. He's given me there are other scriptures that has that sentence in it. I will sing unto the Lord because he hath dealt bountifully with me. No matter what you're going through, God will deal bountifully with you. And he has dealt bountifully with you in the past. And you have to remember those moments in order not to be discouraged and give up the ghost on your faith. You have to remember and recall the blessings of God in your past to hold you steady while you go through in your present day trial. Some of you, your husbands are leaving you for another woman. Some of you, your bodies are failing. Some of you, your money is funny and your change is strange. Some of you, your faith is failing because you've had trial after trial after trial, problem after problem, conflict after conflict, attack after attack. Some of you are fighting demons. Some of you are fighting demons of discouragement, demons of depression, demons of suicide. And you have to take the authority God gave you through his son, Jesus Christ. You have to take that authority and fight back. Kick the devil in the balls. Do whatever you got to do, but fight back. Don't lay there and be the victim and allow him to rape your mind, rape your life, rape your circumstances, rape your faith till you're dragging it all along the ground. No, you want your faith to rise high. No matter what you're going through, you have to look up to the hills from whence cometh your help. Your help comes from the Lord. 
He made heaven and earth. He made man and, and, and angels and demons. He made all that. Everything that's created has been created by God, good or evil. He said, I create good and I create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. God is in control no matter what. The reason Job ended up suffering was because, I got to read this. I want you to hear this so you can understand. Some things are initiated by God because he's setting you up for a tremendous blessing. Okay? So listen to this. I'm going to turn to it right now. Turn to Job chapter 1. Now check this out. Job was not suffering because of sin. Even though, of course, we all fall short of the glory of God, so did he. But listen to what the Bible says. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright one that feared God and eschewed evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep. That man was rich. And 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she asses and a very great household so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. And his sons went and feasted in their houses, every one is day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so, when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. This... Thus did Job continually. Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, check it out, check it out, check it out, check it out. The Lord said unto Satan, the Lord initiated this whole thing. It's called a wager, a bet. Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Check this out. Hast thou considered my servant Job? Now why would he bring Job to Satan's attention? Hmm that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect man and an upright, God's bragging, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, doth Job fear God for naught? In other words, yeah, he's probably fearing you for nothing. Hast thou, has, haven't you made him a hedge about him and a, about his house and a, about all that he hath on every side. In other words, he's saying, yeah, but, but look what you did. Yeah, of course he's going to believe in you. Look what you did. Didn't you just protect him with a thick hedge? You protect his house, his family, everything's protected. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't he uh, uh, praise you? Okay. Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he has is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord, got busy now. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them. And the Sidians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants. 
with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, The fire of God has fallen from heaven and hath burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I only am escaped to, alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, this is crazy. There came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in the eldest brother's house, and behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Sounds like a tornado came and destroyed everything. Then Job arose and rent his mantle. He tore his clothes and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. He did not curse. He worshipped what would y'all have done. Hello. Think about it. Mama gone, brothers and sisters gone, sons and daughters. What would y'all have done? House gone, car gone, bankroll emptied out. What would y'all have done? You would have cursed God, huh? Huh? Yeah. He fell down on the ground and worshiped y'all and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave. And the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Whoa, y'all, is that a challenge or what? Wow. Mm. Again, listen, this is chapter two, because I want you to hear this in detail. There was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence cometh thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and forth, to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, well, wait a minute now, ain't Job had enough? Huh? Doesn't the Bible say God won't put on you more than you can bear? My goodness, what's going on? Why are they focusing in on Job? He got a target on his head? Huh? Some of y'all ask that question, don't you? All right. <clears throat> and the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job? that there is none like him in the earth bragging about this man, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil, and still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. See, without cause, it wasn't punishment. It was an attack. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yet all that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. Ha. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. Now, that can go both ways. It's like, you know, don't touch his life or accept for his life. His life is not in your hand. Okay, now, so he couldn't take his life, but he could jack up his body. Listen to this. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord. This is verse 7. And smoked Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And he took him a potsherd. This is what Job did. He took him a potsherd to scrape himself withal. 
and he sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thou integrity? Well, curse God and die. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good of the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? In all this did Job sin. <clears throat> Excuse me. In all this did not Job sin with his lips. Wow. Mm, mm, mm. My goodness. Now, I'm not going to go any further because it's a long chapter. His friends come to comfort him and they're wondering what sin did he commit? They're not that comforting at all. No matter what they said, Job defended God. Job didn't know why he was going through what he went through. But he would not curse God. He would not lamb blast God. You hear me? He would not get up in God's face talking about what you doing to me. Why are you doing it? I don't, I, you know, I thought that you and I were tight. Yeah, it looks like you ain't in my corner. So maybe I don't need to be bothered with you no more. Leaving me like this. Nope. He never turned his back on God. Even when he felt like God had abandoned him. Even, and he didn't know why. Now, I want to read the end. Because some of y'all don't know the end of your life. But I want you to hear the end. This should encourage you. Job 42. I'm not going to be much longer. I'm not reading the whole thing. Now. Verse 10, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then came there unto him all his brethren. Now, let me apologize because I said seven times I was caught up with the number seven and didn't realize at the beginning of the chapter it was seven sons. So that's where I got my numbers mixed up. So he blessed them twice as much. Now listen to this. This is verse 11. Then came there unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all they that had been of acquaintance before and did eat bread with him in the house. And they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money and every one an earring of gold. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than the beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and a thousand yoke of oxen and a thousand she asses. And he also had seven sons and three daughters. And he called the name of the first well, anyway, he named the, the, the kids. And in all the land, verse 15, all the land were no women found so fair as the daughters of Job. And their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. After this lived Job a hundred and forty years long and saw his sons and his sons' sons, even four generations so Job died being old and full of days. Now, you see the blessing that, let, that was waiting for him after he came out of that suffering. See, a lot of times we, if we go outside and, and we get caught in the rain, we'll complain about that. If we lose our cell phone and we got to buy another, we'll complain about that. Why didn't the Lord... Why did the Lord allow that to happen? We lose $50 and we complain about that. Look at what all this man went through. The chapter will tell you, if y'all want to read about true suffering, you read that chapter. If you really want to see what suffering's about and how no matter what happened from beginning to end, 
Job never forsook God. He never turned his back on God. He never upbraided God. He never cursed God. He never divorced God. He never took his faith and tossed it in the trash and said, forget you, God. He never did any of that. He kept his integrity with his relationship to him. Even though he could not figure out why would God allow it. Some of you are going through what you're going through as a setup for your future blessing. But your future blessing depends on your present attitude as you go through. Hmm. What you doing with that attitude? As you go through, will you get t a tendency to get angry? Are you crying out to God or are you cussing at him? Telling them all what you're doing. How are you handling what you're going through? When somebody dies in your family, you mad at God because he allowed them to die when you prayed for him to heal them? Hmm? Hmm. How are you handling that? Job lost seven sons and three daughters. All cattle, all his, all his, he was, everything was, was, was a liquidation. Everything was gone. All his financial blessings were gone. Every loved one was gone. And you talk about being alone. Oh, brother man was alone at that point. Even his friends couldn't comfort him. It was like if 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 uh if if you guys call your friends enemies, I mean if 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 you call yourself a, a friend, I'd rather have an enemy. They'd be more comforting than what you're doing right now. Just leave me alone. So we don't realize God doesn't do that with everybody because everybody can't handle it. I don't think I could. So I thank God if he doesn't do that with me. I'm sorry. I'll just do it without some of the blessing. But the bottom line is, <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. That's my flesh talking. But the bottom line is, when God's ready to put you through something, he's got the grace to keep you. Do you have the faith to maintain that blessing? To maintain the faith? to maintain your integrity with God? Or is it like, well, you forgot me? Well, guess what? Talk to the hand, baby. Forget you, God. I ain't got time. You ain't got time for me. I ain't got time for you. You gonna leave me like this and take my family and take my money and leave me without a car and leave me? Forget you. And he, he ain't even allowed Satan to touch your body. And you are already ready to walk away. Hmm. Yeah. So. It's very difficult. It's easy to say we believe in God when things are going well. That's what Satan told God. Yeah, it's easy for him. Look how you blessed him. He got everything going for him. Who wouldn't bless you? Yeah, you, yeah, you let me at him. I'll get him to cuss you and turn his back on you. Uh huh. No matter how dark things got in that man's life, can you imagine living with boils? Now you ain't worried about money when your boils are bugging you all day long. They're painful. Your skin hurts from your scalp to the bottom of your feet. Every inch of you hurts. It hurts to go to the bathroom. It hurts to pee. It hurts to sleep. No matter where you turn, there's a discomfort. You're on edge. You're tense. You're not only hurting, you're itching. You're scraping to, 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 oh man, it's like you just can't get out of your misery. Seven years of that, 24-7, morning, noon, and night, waking up out of your sleep in misery. Seven years, not seven months, not seven days, not seven weeks, years. And you're still talking about blessed be the name of the Lord. Woo! That's what you call a sacrifice of praise. 
Now you want to see what a real sacrifice is. That's a sacrifice. I take my hat off to, to Job. Mm -mm. No, this ain't the time and I ain't the one. I'm sorry. Job, I take my hat off to. But God also gave him the grace. God will not put anything on you that he cannot carry you through with. But will you be sustained by God? Or will you not even give him a moment's notice and as soon as trouble rises, you, you hit the dough, you gone. You're done with that so-called God that ain't coming to your rescue. All in prayers, seven years of prayers and tears and suffering. Hearing nothing. Till right before his blessing was to come. That's crazy, y'all. I watched my husband lose his eyesight, have strokes, go on dialysis, watch his son be incarcerated. Go through all kind of heartache. Sister died, mother died, all kind of stuff going on. Losing his chance to the inheritance because a, a family member kept it and didn't share it with him, which was supposed to be part of his. And he didn't get a dime and he had to live tight in blackness. Don't even get to see the sun coming up. Everything's black, no eyesight whatsoever. And he'd be up there in church. The, they sit singing songs to praise the Lord and he's pounding his white cane, his white cane on the ground and waving the other hand in the air with tears going down his face as he danced and praised God for his goodness. Some of y'all wouldn't even be up in a church. You'd be so mad at God, you wouldn't even want anybody to use his name around you if you went blind. Or if you went on dialysis, or if you got stuck in a wheelchair or lost a leg, you didn't have time for God because you wanted him to be your Santa Claus, your sugar daddy. You didn't want him to be there for you through hard times because you don't want to go through nothing. I know I don't, but I know I got enough sense to know who, whose side I need on mine and whose side I need to be on. I'd be stupid to turn my back on God. I may not like what he's doing, but I love him and I know he loves me. But I take my hat off to Job. I take my hat off to my husband. But some people, the first sign of trouble, they're gone. They're in the wind. Now, I ask you, will you go through? Here are the ways you can go through more painlessly, with less pain, constantly staying in God's face, crying out to God in your dis moments of despair, reading his word, not just reading haphazardly. Ask God to lead you to scripture because when he talks you through your trial, it makes it much easier. He knows what scriptures will carry you and lift your spirits and strengthen you on the inner man. And he'll lead you to those scriptures to comfort you, keep you comforted through it all. You may not hear his voice, but you'll hear him through your word. Stay around God's people, have them pray for you. Do your best. To come clean and everything you can think of. Ask God to make sure there's no wicked way in you. And keep that. Keep that clear. Make sure you're willing to forgive any and everybody that has ever offended you in your life. So your spirit is clean. You want to go through this thing and, and ask God to help you not complain. God says, let there be no complaining in the streets. The, the best keeping your attitude sweet when your spirit is bitter is what brings about the blessings of God when he pulls you out. I hope that helps you because all of us have to go through stuff. 
but all of us get rewarded too. And my, my take on it is how big do you want the reward? God says to the pure, I will show myself pure. To the merciful, I will show myself merciful. But to the froward, I'll show myself froward. So you want to be sweet. You want to be patient. You want to be full of faith. You want to be full of mercy. You want to have a pure heart. And watch God abundantly bless you and deal with you bountifully when he pulls you out. And in some cases, while he's taking you through, you'll have glorious moments all along the way. God bless you as you keep the faith through some very trying times. Now, let me give you this real quick word of exhortation. And you guys mute your mics because I hear a lot of rustling going on in the background. Listen to this. I want you to do this. Oh, God, help me keep. I want you to pray a rebuke. Rebuke the spirits of discouragement. Thank you. Rebuke the spirits of depression. Rebuke the spirits of suicide. This is a warning. I do believe that witches, war, whatever they call themselves out there, that are playing on the on the on the on the team of Satan, are conjuring up all kinds of demons of suicide, all kinds of demons of violence, all kinds of demons to wear out the saints and wear down and beat down their faith with discouragement, with depression, with melancholy, with hope, feelings of hopelessness. Don't buy into those lies. God is not a man that he should lie. So what God has promised he will do. You hear me? God is able to do what he said he will do. No matter how much time comes between the promise and the fulfillment, it still gets done. God bless you. And I'm done. <laughs>